On the island of Cuba, there are a number of deep holes, caves flooded with water where light never penetrates. This dark world is home to species of blind fish. Blind because their eyes have atrophied. In this opaque atmosphere, they are no longer necessary. Some of these survivors of the planet Earth have adapted to places like this, where, because of the lack of light, colors serve no purpose. Such beings are almost always white or transparent. However, the vast majority of animal species depend on the sun as a source of energy through green plants. Outside marginal worlds like this one, living beings are flooded with light. And where there is light, colors and designs develop as a means of communication with the surrounding world. Living beings on this planet are dressed to suit the occasion. An entire code of colors is used to send messages to others, a sophisticated system of communication which everyone tries to employ to their advantage. Strident messages of love that may be intercepted by dangerous eyes. markings, bright colors inviting you to eat them, or warning you to steer clear. The same color can mean entirely different things depending on the bearer. A red flower attracts pollinators, but no one in his right mind would eat a red caterpillar or a scarlet frog. Their color screams, beware, poison. Some seek to frighten, while others compete to be the most beautiful. Humans, too, adopt color as a means of communication. Since the beginning of time, we have used them to express our emotions and feelings. In all cultures, there are colors of love, of joy, and of death. Even in the most advanced societies, colors form an important part of our identity, both as individuals and as a group. We are going to listen to the language of light. On the beaches of mud and sand that the receding sea leaves behind along the coast of Java in Indonesia lives an animal whose life revolves around color, the fiddler crab. When the tide goes out, they take over the beach. It is time for the males to compete for attention, and this they do by displaying the colors of their enormous claws. Against the brown background, the signal clearly stands out. It serves to attract the females who do not have this oversized appendage. And not just any female, only those of their own species. Here on the mud flats, like rival baseball teams, each species of fiddler crab has claws of a different color. This is the white team. Clearly identified in this way, they will not waste time fighting with males of other species. So the whites compete against the whites, the reds against the reds. There are constant threats and the winner takes his prize. While all around the gladiators fight for their colors, another more discreet animal has its own way of sending messages to other members of its species. The mudhopper is a fish that is quite at home out of the sea, a diver in reverse, carrying its own water reserves alongside its gills. For them, it would be very dangerous to bear bright colors all the time because they would be seen by their predators. So they use the signal which can be switched on and off to send short messages. This system works well and is fairly widespread among very different and distant animals, such as these anony lizards in the West Indies. The problem is some predators have very good eyesight when it comes to intercepting the visual signals of the anonies.
The secret is to broadcast just enough to get the message across. One word too much could prove fatal. thing is not so much the colors themselves, but the patterns they form. For animals that see in black and white, such as the giraffes or the zebras, the important thing is the design and the distribution of stripes and patches on their bodies. However, for birds like these vulturine guinea fowl, both things, design and color, combine to convey a wide range of messages to others of their species. Without a doubt, the most important of all is their identity. I'm one of you because I'm the same color as you. I'm a vulturine guinea fowl. In this way, gregarious animals are identified with each other, and others recognize them as belonging to the same clan. But when everyone wears the same uniform, there might sometimes be problems when it comes to telling individuals apart. For example, how does a zebra calf know which of the adults is its mother? Simple. Shortly after birth, it memorizes its mother's pattern of stripes, which is unique. Thanks to this, among other factors, her young can recognize her, despite the constantly moving confusion of barcodes. Here in the north of Kenya, two species of zebra often mix. Gravies with thin stripes and bochelles with broader stripes. For them, the differences are as great as if the other species were buffaloes. They simply ignore each other. For the inhabitants of New Guinea, war and tribal clashes form part of their existence, and so painting yourself in the right colors can be a matter of life or death. On this large island, around 1,000 different languages are spoken, and the members of each clan use different war paints in their frequent disputes. Within each group, the dominant colors are similar and act like the uniforms of soldiers in battle. Any confusion and you could be speared down by someone from your own side. Though the government of the island tries to get them to resolve their disputes in the courts, almost 5,000 Papuans continue to die every year in these tribal wars. In any case, a clan's body markings form part of its cultural identity because they're also used in the dances they perform to commemorate the great battles of the past. For a Papuan child, the colors of the enemy tribes represent terror and death, while those of its own clan embody peace in the home. Even if these clashes come to an end someday, the clan colors will live on in the stories they represent through dance. <laughs> 